The Battle of Tulkarm took place on 19 September 1918, beginning of the Battle of Sharon, which along with the Battle of Nablus formed the set-piece Battle of Megiddo fought between 19 and 25 September in the last months of the Sinai and Palestine campaign of the First World War. During the infantry phase of the Battle of Sharon the British Empire 60th Division, 21 Corps attacked and captured the section of the front line nearest the Mediterranean coast under cover of an intense artillery barrage including a creeping barrage and naval gunfire. This Egyptian expeditionary force victory over the entrenched Ottoman 8th Army, composed of German and Ottoman soldiers, began the final offensive, ultimately resulting in the destruction of the equivalent of one Ottoman army, the retreat of what remained of two others, and the capture of many thousands of prisoners and many miles of territory from the Judean hills to the border of modern-day Turkey. After the end of the Battle of Megiddo, the Desert Mounted Corps pursued the retreating soldiers to Damascus, six days later. By the time an armistice of Mudros was signed between the Allies and the Ottoman Empire five weeks later, Aleppo had been captured. During the Battle of Tulkarm the 60th Division, advanced to cut the front-line Ottoman trenches. They were supported as they moved forward by artillery fire, which lifted and crept forward, while the infantry advanced to capture Nar el Falik. Their advance forced the Ottoman 8th Army to withdraw, and the continuing attack resulted in the capture of Tulkarm, and the 8th Army headquarters. The tactic of the infantry attack covered by creeping artillery fire, was so successful that the front line was quickly cut and the way cleared for the British Empire Cavalry Divisions of Desert Mounted Corps to advance northwards up the plain of Sharon. The cavalry aimed to capture the Ottoman lines of communication in the rear of the two German and Ottoman armies being attacked in the Judean hills. By the 20th of September these cavalry divisions reached the rear, completely outflanked and almost encircled the Ottoman 7th and 8th armies during the Battle of Nazareth, capture of Afula and Basin, capture of Jenin and Battle of Samak. Meanwhile, British Empire infantry divisions on the right of the 60th Division advanced to successfully attack the German and Ottoman trench lines along their front line at the battles of Tabzer and Arrera. The Ottoman 7th Army headquarters at Nablus was subsequently attacked and captured during the Battle of Nablus. Chapter 1 Background By July 1918, it was clear that the German Spring Offensive on the Western Front, which had forced the postponement of offensive plans in Palestine, had failed, resulting in a return to trench warfare on the Western Front. This coincided with the approach of the campaigning season in the Middle East. General Edmund Allenby, commander of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force, was very anxious to make a move in September when he expected to capture Tulkarm and Nablus, the road to Giza Ed Damier and S. Holt. Another reason for moving to this line is that it will encourage both my own new Indian troops and my Arab allies. By September 1918, the front line held by the EF began virtually at sea level at a point on the Mediterranean coast about 12 miles north of Jaffa, just north of Asaf, ran about 15 miles southeast across the plain of Sharon, then east over the Judean hills for about 15 miles rising to a height of 1,500 to 2,000 feet above sea level. From the Judean hills the front line fell steeply to 1,000 feet below sea level in the Jordan Valley, where it continued for about 18 miles to the Dead Sea and the foothills of the mountains of Gilead slash Moab. Chapter 2, Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1, British Plans and Preparations On the first quarter of the front line which stretched 15 miles across the plain of Sharon from the Mediterranean Sea, the 21st Corps 35,000 Infantry, Desert Mounted Corps 9,000 Cavalry and 383 artillery pieces were preparing for the attack. On the remaining three quarters of the front line stretching to the Dead Sea, 22,000 Infantry, 3,000 Mounted Troops and 157 artillery pieces of the 20th Corps and Chaita's Force were deployed facing the 7th and 4th Ottoman Armies. Concentration, Surprise, and speed were key elements in the Blitzkrieg warfare planned by Allenby. The Battle of Sharon was to begin with an attack on the eight miles long front line, between the branch of the Jaffa-Jerusalem railway running north from Lida towards Tulkarm and the Mediterranean, 
where Allenby massed three mounted divisions behind three of the 21st Corps Infantry Divisions, supported by 18 densely deployed, heavy and siege batteries. Together, the five infantry divisions of the 21st Corps, commanded by Lieutenant General Edward Bolfin, had a 4.4 to 1 advantage in total troop numbers and three times the defenders' heavy artillery. The objective of the 60th Division, which consisted of three British Indian Army infantry battalions for each British battalion, was to attack in overwhelming strength at the selected point, supported by the greatest possible weight of artillery. To cut the German and Ottoman front line and create a gap sufficiently wide for the great mass of mounted troops to break through, passing quickly, unimpaired by serious fighting, to the rear of the 7th and 8th armies in the Judean hills. After the cavalry breakthrough on the coast, the 21st Corps advanced to capture the headquarters of the Ottoman 8th Army at Tulkam together with sections of the lateral railway line in the Judean hills between Tulkam and Nablus. A branch of the Jezreel Valley Railway, which supplied the two Ottoman armies, including the important railway junction at Mesadiah in the Judean hills. The infantry divisions were to continue their attack by swinging northeast, pivoting on their right to push the defenders back out of their trenches away from the coast and back into the Judean hills towards Mesadiah. The 21st Corps 60th Division would advance northeast, towards Tulkam, while on their right the 3rd, the 7th and the 75th Divisions, each division consisting of one British Infantry and three British Indian Army Infantry Battalion per Brigade, would attack the Tabsa defences, while the all-British 54th Division and the Detachment Francais de Palestine et de Syrie defended and pivoted on the Rifot salient. Further to the right, the 20th Corps would begin the Battle of Nablus in the Judean Hills in support of the main attack by the 21st Corps, by advancing to capture the 7th Army headquarters at Nablus and blocking the main escape route from the Judean Hills to the Gisa Ed Damier dock together, these attacks would force the enemy to retreat down the main line of communication along the road and branch line of the Jezreel Valley Railway, which ran alongside each other to pass through Jenin, and across the Zdriel on plain 50 miles away, and on to Damascus. The plain was also the site of the important communication hubs at Afula and Basin and here thousands would be captured by the cavalry of Desert Mounted Corps as they advanced to their objectives of Afula, the Yildirim Army Group's headquarters at Nazareth and Jenin on the Estrelon Plain. The successful exploitation of the infantry attack on the coast by Desert Mounted Corps cavalry's breakthrough depended on the Mounted Corps occupying the Estrelon Plain, 40 miles behind the Ottoman front line. The site of important Ottoman communications hubs at Afula and Basin, the Estrelon Plain links the plain of Sharon with the Jordan Valley. Together, these three lowlands form a semicircle round the positions held by the Ottoman 7th and 8th Armies in the Judean Hills. If the Estrelon Plain could be captured swiftly, the entire Ottoman army west of the Jordan could be captured. Chapter 2 Section 2 British Empire Deployments the 60th Division commanded by Major General J. S. M. Shea, was to fight on the ancient battlefield between Asaf and Nar el Falik, where in 1191 King Richard defeated Saladin and avenged Hotin. Shea's infantry division was to advance to establish a bridgehead across Nar el Falik and create a gap in the front line for the cavalry. Then the 60th Division was to advance northeast to capture Tulkam and cut the railway line east of it. By the evening of 18 September, the 60th Division was deployed with the 180th Brigade in the lead and the 181st Brigade some 16 miles from Tulkam, with the 179th Brigade in reserve. The recently formed 5th Light Horse Brigade was attached to the 60th Division, although it was positioned for its initial advance directly towards Tulkam, behind the 7th Division. Also attached to the 60th Division were the 13th Pontoon Park, which would build a pontoon crossing of Nar el Falik, the 102nd Brigade Royal Garrison Artillery, and the 2nd Light Armoured Motor Battery, who were to join the division at Tulkam. Chapter 2 Section 3, German, and Ottoman Forces and Preparations In August 1918, the Central Powers Yildirim Army Group commanded by Otto Lehmann von Sanders consisted of 40,598 frontline infantrymen organized into 12 divisions defending a 56 miles long front. 
They were armed with 19,819 rifles, 273 light and 696 heavy machine guns. The high number of machine guns reflects the Ottoman army's new tables of organization and the high machine gun component of the German Asia Corps. Another estimate of this fighting strength was 26,000 infantry, 2,000 mounted troops and 372 guns. Yet another estimate is that on a 15 miles front extending from the Mediterranean coast westwards, the German and Ottoman force may have deployed 8,000 infantry supported by 130 guns, with the remaining 45 miles of front defended by 24,000 German and Ottoman soldiers and 270 guns. Sivat Pasha's 8th Army of 10,000 soldiers supported by 157 guns, with its headquarters at Tulkam, held a line from the Mediterranean coast, just north of Asaf to Firka in the Judean hills. This army was organized into the 22nd Corps and the Asia Corps, also known as the Left Wing Group, commanded by the German Colonel Gustav von Oppen, with the 2nd Caucasian Cavalry Division in reserve. The Asia Corps linked the 8th Army's 22 Corps on the coast with the 7th Army's 3 Corps further inland, facing units of the British 20 Corps. The 7th, 19th and 20th Divisions held the shortest frontage in the entire Yildirim Army Group. The 7th and 20th Divisions, together held a total of 7.5 miles of trenches, the 7th Division held 4.3 miles nearest the coast while the 20th Division held 3.1 miles and the Asia Corps 19th Division held 6.2 miles of trenches further inland, with the 46th Division in reserve 7.5 miles from the front line, near the 8th Army's headquarters at Tulkam. These divisions were some of the most highly regarded fighting formations in the Ottoman Army. In 1915 the 7th and 19th Divisions had fought as part of ESAT Passa's Three Corps at Gallipoli. The 20th Division had also fought towards the end of the Gallipoli campaign and served for a year in Galicia fighting against Russians on the Eastern Front. This regular army division, which had been raised and stationed in Palestine, was sometimes referred to as the Arab Division. The 22nd Corps was supported by the majority of the Yildirim Army's heavy artillery for counter-battery operations. Here, three of the five Ottoman Army heavy artillery batteries in Palestine were deployed. Further, the Ottoman frontline regiments had been alerted that a major attack was imminent. On 17 September 1918, Ottoman Army intelligence accurately placed five infantry divisions and a detachment opposite their 8th Army. As a consequence, the 46th Infantry Division was moved up 8.1 miles to the southwest to a new reserve position at Ettaya, directly behind the Ottoman 22 Corps' frontline divisions. Claims have been made that the Ottoman armies were under strength, overstretched, suffering greatly from a strained supply system and overwhelmingly outnumbered by the EF by about 2 to 1, and hemorrhaging deserters. It is claimed, without taking into account the large number of machine guns, the effective strengths of the nine infantry battalions of the 16th Infantry Division each was equal to a British infantry company of between 100 and 250 men while 150 to 200 men were assigned to the 19th Infantry Division battalions which had had 500 to 600 men at Beersheba. It is also claimed that problems with the supply system in February 1918 resulted in the normal daily ration in Palestine being 125 grains of bread and boiled beans in the morning, at noon, and at night, without oil or any other condiment. Chapter 2 Section 3 Subsection 2 Tabsa Defenses The Tabsa defenses consisted of the only continuous trench and redoubt system on the front line. Here the Ottomans had dug two or three lines of trenches and redoubts, varying in depth from one to three miles. These defences, centred on the Tabsa village, stretched from Juljulai to the coast. Another less developed system of defences was five miles behind, and the beginnings of a third system ran from Tulkam across the plain of Sharon to Nar Iskandiun. It has been suggested that an inflexible defence relying on a line of trenches had been developed by the Ottoman armies, which required every inch of ground to be fought for, when a more flexible system would have better suited the situation. Chapter 3 Battle. Chapter 3 Section 1 Bombardment 
The infantry will advance to the assault under an artillery barrage which will be put down at the hour at which the infantry leave their positions of deployment. This hour will be known as the 21 Corps Zero Hour. There will be no preliminary bombardment. Just as the preliminary attack by the 53rd Division, 20 Corps on the Judean Hills front was pausing, at 4.30 a bombardment by artillery, trench mortars and machine guns began firing at the German and Ottoman front and second lines of trenches in front of 21 Corps. Three siege batteries fired on opposing batteries while the destroyers HMS Druid and HMS Forrester opened fire on the trenches north of Nahr el Falik. This intense bombardment, which closely resembled a Western Front bombardment, continued for half an hour, with guns deployed one to every 50 yards of front. The artillery was organized by weight and targets, heavy artillery was aimed at counter batteries with some guns and 4.5-inch howitzers shelling targets beyond the range of the field artillery's barrage and any places the infantry advance was held up. Meanwhile, the field artillery bombarded the Ottoman front line until the infantry advance arrived, then the 18-pounders and Royal Horse artillery batteries lifted to form a creeping barrage in front of the infantry up to their extreme range. This barrage began firing at a range of 4,000 yards but by 8 o'clock it had been extended to 15,000 yards as the guns elevated and their firing range extended at a rate of between 50 to 75 yards, and 100 yards per minute. There was no systematic attempt by the artillery to cut the wire, the leading units were to cut it by hand or carry some way of crossing or bridging it. Chapter 3 Section 2, 21 Corps Attacks while the 60th Division's attack on the coast was proceeding, the 75th Division on their right attacked the Tapsa defences, fighting its way towards Et Tyre which they captured. On the right of the 75th Division, the 7th Division advanced northeastwards towards the north of Et Tyre to attack the defences west of Tapsa, while the 3rd Division, on the right of the 7th Division, advanced rapidly and seized the first line defences between Beer Odis and the Hadra Road. This division then turned eastwards to make a flank attack on the defences at Julia and Calcilia in the Judean foothills. Meanwhile, the 54th Division on the right of the 3rd Division with the French detachment on its left, achieved their objective of establishing and acting as a firm pivot for the rest of the British infantry line, although they experienced strong resistance from Asia Corps. Chapter 3 Section 3, 60th Division Breach Ottoman Front Line Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 180th Brigade Capture of Nar el Falik. Twelve minutes after the artillery bombardment began, the 180th Brigade's three Indian infantry battalions attacked in two columns. The right column, led by the 50th Kumuon Rifles, captured Burkett Atif and 110 prisoners along with eight machine guns. Then, Advancing at a rate of 75 yards a minute behind the artillery barrage, at 5.50 they captured redoubts and two succeeding lines of trenches, along with 125 prisoners and seven machine guns. Shortly afterwards, a further 69 prisoners were captured west of Burkett Ramadan. The 297th Deccan Infantry following the Kumuon rifles captured a redoubt, 40 prisoners and four machine guns. Meanwhile, the left column consisting of the second guides was caught by an Ottoman artillery barrage which caused 54 casualties before the leading companies reached the intact Ottoman wire, which was crossed. By 5.40 all three Ottoman trench lines were captured, with more than 100 prisoners. The bridge across Nar el Falik which carried the coast road was strongly defended, and it was not until 7.20 that the 180th Brigade's 297th Infantry from the right column was able to capture it and a company established a bridgehead on the northern side of the mouth of Nar el Falik five miles behind the Ottoman front line, providing the cavalry with safe passage northwards. The 180th Brigade had captured the front line defences and about 600 prisoners, while advancing 6,000 to 7,000 yards north of their starting point, suffering 414 casualties. All wire entanglements on the beach were removed by the reserve battalion, the two thirtieths Punjabis, so the 5th Cavalry Division could pass through a few minutes later. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 3 181st Brigade 
Having captured Nar el Falik and after providing the cavalry with the required breakthrough to advance northwards, the 60th Division then turned northeast towards Tulkarm, with the 5th Light Horse Brigade on its right flank. At 6.15, the 181st Brigade was ordered to advance to the north. The 181st had one machine gun section attached to each battalion, and the 297th's Deccan infantry in reserve. By 8.30 the leading troops of the brigade column had crossed Nar el Falik and the causeway at Cage. Easy Zebabd, dot then turning eastwards, their first objectives were to capture Ayun el Wurdat and advance on Amsur two miles further north. Both of these were captured by 11 o'clock, by the 130th Boluchis and the 222nd's Battalion, London Regiment, both of the 181st Brigade. Their next objective, prior to advancing on Tulkarm, was to take the Kalkali to Tulkarm Road. The battalions were supported by two 18-pounder batteries of the 301st Brigade Royal Field Artillery. Chapter 3 Section 4, Ottoman Defenders in the Coastal Sector By 5.45 telephone communication to the Ottoman front had been cut and five minutes later all German and Ottoman reserves had been ordered forward. At 8.50, the 8th Army's commander, Sivat reported to Lehman von Sanders at the Yildirim Army Group headquarters at Nazareth, that the Ottoman 7th Division was out of the fight and the 19th Division was under attack. Lehman ordered the 110th Infantry Regiment to advance to support the 8th Army. Meanwhile, a rearguard formed by 100 soldiers from the 7th Division armed with two machine guns and 17 artillery guns, and 300 soldiers from the 20th Division armed with four machine guns and seven artillery guns, made a desperate attempt to hold back the British Empire attack. The rearguards established by the 7th and 20th Divisions continued to fight while retiring, the 7th Division establishing divisional headquarters at Mezudia. Eventually, the 19th Division was forced to retreat towards Krikasim, while the 22nd Corps was in retreat towards Ettaya, having lost most of its artillery. The enemy has broken through our lines in spite of our counterattacks, without assistance operations are impossible. By 12 o'clock, Sivat was aware that British Empire infantry was advancing on his headquarters at Tulkarm, and by 1630 that Eptire had been captured. By dusk, he had begun to move his headquarters north, having been finally and completely cut off from news and reports from his 22 Corps. Chapter 3, Section 5 Capture of Tulkarm Chapter 3 Section 5 Subsection 2 181st Brigade with 5th Light Horse Brigade As the 181st Brigade approached Tulkarm from the southwest, a number of aircraft bombed the town. The combined effects of the aerial attack and the approaching infantry resulted in many occupants leaving Tulkarm, and traveling along the road to Nablus. At 1700 hours the 181st Brigade's 222nd Battalion, London Regiment with the 2 152nd's Infantry on the right captured Tulkarm Railway Station and the town, while the 2 127th's Balak Light Infantry were held up at Kwansaw. At Tulkarm 800 prisoners and 12 field guns were captured. The 5th Light Horse Brigade commanded by Brigadier General MacArthur Onslow with the 2nd New Zealand Machine Gun Squadron attached, had been instructed by the commander of the 60th Division to bypass Tulkarm, if it was strongly defended, and cut the main road to Nablus from Tulkarm. This Australian and French cavalry brigade moved to the left, to clear the infantry battle and enemy machine gun fire opposing the 181st Brigade, and rode north of Tulkarm to eventually take up a position controlling the road to Nablus. About 2100 hours a lieutenant, 23 troopers and two machine guns of the 5th Light Horse Brigade, guarding the road to Nablus, saw a long column approaching from the south. The light horsemen opened fire and stopped the column in the narrowest part of the road. After a brief discussion, between 2,000 and 2,800 Ottoman troops with between 4 and 15 guns surrendered to the regiment mixed to Marca de Covalieri, 2,000 yards north of the town. Chapter 4, Aftermath By the end of the day, the 60th Division had captured all its objectives, including the town of Tulkarm, which had been the site of the 8th Army's headquarters, after a hard march of 17 miles from their starting line. 
By this time the 8th Army commander was a fugitive, his army was in disarray, and his right flank was exposed, while the headquarters of the Desert Mounted Corps was bivouacked near Lyctra many miles north, after successfully riding through the gap created by the infantry up the plain of Sharon. At 2045 in the evening of 19 September, General Bolfin, commander of the 21st Corps, issued orders for the continuation of the advance. The objectives for the 60th Division on 20 September were to take up a position facing generally north on the north side of the Tul Kham to Deir Sharaf Road with their right on Jebel Birsa northeast of Aneta, and left at Shavaik north of Tul Kham. The 60th Division's 179th Brigade moved from Tulkam towards Aneta, with the objective of capturing the railway tunnel near Jebel Birsa two miles to the northeast. The three 151st Punjab rifles, with a squadron from the Composite Regiment, Corps Cavalry, a section of machine guns, and two 4.5-inch howitzers formed the advance guard, which quickly pushed small rearguards from ridges. The Punjab rifles entered Aneta, at 11.20 having captured 66 prisoners, and occupied the intact tunnel shortly after while the 181st Brigade took up a defensive line north of the Tulkam to Aneta Road from the right of the 179th Brigade to the village of Shavaik. Meanwhile, at 2 o'clock on 20 September, the 5th Light Horse Brigade, less one squadron guarding prisoners, advanced from Tulkam towards Oje to cut the railway from Mesadaya to Jenin. Two squadrons reached the railway one mile north of Oje, where they blew up the line. The brigade was then ordered to move north to Jenin, but instead the brigade concentrated back at Tulkam at 1900 hours, having captured 140 prisoners and two machine guns. During the 19th of September, the 21st Corps had destroyed the right wing of the Ottoman front line, capturing 7,000 prisoners and 100 guns. Remnants of the 8th Army which had escaped were captured the next day by Desert Mounted Corps at Jenin in the Zdrelon Plain to the north of the Judean Hills. On 19 and 20 September the 21st Corps suffered total of 3,378 casualties of whom 446 were killed. They had captured 12,000 prisoners, 149 guns and vast quantities of ammunition and transport. With the exception of the Asia Corps, the whole 8th Army had been destroyed. 